Welcome to today's part of this SPSS methodology, this time with a unit on multiple responses. Multiple responsive could be something like that we have a question, as here the question 11, where someone could check whether, for example, he goes shopping at the different clothing stores. Here we have a list of clothing stores, altogether 11 of them, and someone has the possibility for each clothing store to check independent of whether he ch already checked something else whether he goes there or he doesn't so theoretically it could be that someone answered none of them or someone answered all of them checked all of them checked none of them and thereby this question 11 couldn't be comprised into one single variable because it could be different solutions we have here. And well, we still want to get some insights on this, and that's where the function of multiple responsive, co uh, responsive comes into play. How to work with this? Well, first of all, we need to tell SPSS which of our variables are altogether the multiple responses of this one question. This we do if we go to Analyze, and here we have the option Multiple Response. In this context we see we cannot actually do something with this. Before we can do something, we have to define a variable set. So the variable set contains the information, which of the variables in the data set make up this one multiple response question. So we click here, then we select in the upper part all the different parts of the question, so everything F11 from A to K. Down here we tell him which values to count. So in this case it's like zero or missing value if nothing has been checked and one if it has been checked. So here we tell him count the ones. And then we need to give him a name and a label so as a name, for example, we could call this store and the label is like clothing stores visited. Then we click on add and we see here we got a new multiple response set. We click on close. Well, basically nothing has happened, but if we go back to analyze and multiple responses, we see here that we can calculate frequencies or cross tables. So if we click on frequencies, we see here this is our new multiple response set. We can click here to transfer this into tables 4. So for this he will generate a frequency table and clicking on OK, this is my frequency table. So he tells me he has data for 284 observations so 284 people answered this question. Here in the first column we see all in all we have 536 answers and the next part are percentages. Percentages in so far how many of them have answered? That's the second column. So 20, uh, 41 of the 536, so the 7.6 percent, go to PNC. The 87 of 536, uh, 12 point, uh, sorry, 16.2 um, percent, go to Zara. This is important when we no want to know which of the different choices is the most important one. So here we can see most frequency, Zara was checked, least frequency, frequently, Primark was checked. So this is important when we want to compare the different options to each other. If we want to relate this to the 284, so how many of those 284 have checked each of those options, in the end it will be the same result, but 
slightly different in the interpretation. Here we could say, all in all, around 30% of all observations checked Zara. Around 5% of all observations checked New Yorker. So there are two different ways of interpreting our results. Either to go as percent of all checked answers or as a percentage of all observations. So we get both answers here. However, this is not the only thing we can do. We could also go here, multiple responses, to cross tabs and with cross tabs select for example our store variable as rows and then gender as columns. Here we see we need still to define what's the smallest value, the largest value. So here we go from 0 to 1, men and women. And if we click on OK, we get here our cross table for the multiple responses and the answers for men and women. This is basically all we can do with multiple responses, so we cannot use this in more sophisticated analyses, but still we can get some interesting insights from the frequency tables already, and in particular from the cross tables. Well, as this is all we can do with multiple response variables, this then already concludes this session. I hope you enjoyed this and you learned something from it. And well, if you want to see more of this, feel free to visit the rest of this SPSS methodology. Until then, see you and goodbye.